Hey, it's Marcus, and welcome to episode eight of Between the Bellows, a show that combines short stories and large format portraits. Today, we're going to be diving into the fiery world of glass blowing right here in Los Angeles with an artist named Kazuki Takazawa. He's been doing it for about 18 years, and I got to watch him use fire to melt sand and turn it into these amazing glass sculptures. So after speaking with him and learning a little bit more about his work, I took his portrait in the hot shop using Ilford FP4 8x10 film. So let's go learn a little bit more about Kazuki. My name is Kazuki Takizawa. I'm a glass artist and I run and own KT Glassworks here in Los Angeles. When you first see glass, you know, it's very intimidating. The fire is pointing at you and there's a roar coming from this burner or this fan over here. And uh, so there's a lot going on. But if you look closely at a perfect team, uh, a really efficient team, it's like a dance or a performance almost. I feel like the molten glass is an extension of who you are. Somebody who's like calm and collected will have very calm looking glass, I think. And, and for me as well, like if I'm, if I'm feeling frantic some, one day, I think it shows up in the glass. A lot of times when I have first time students, they will squeeze the glass so much because they think it's all about strength. But glass starts out as liquid, remember? And so it's very soft and it requires you to be uh, very gentle with the material. Um, it's only when the glass is solid, becoming solid, when you need to really increase that pressure. When you're a student, you're trying to learn how to keep things on center, uh, make things that are symmetrical. And so when you get really into the honing your skill in glass blowing, it becomes harder and harder to step outside of the box and think organically and think sculpturally. Just blowing things that are symmetrical wasn't enough for me, you know? Just making vases or lights 100 times a day, it wasn't enough for me. It was a balance between, you know, doing what I needed to do to, you know, make my living and, and also um, have the discipline to come back and experiment and, and really remember what I really want to do. I love the fact that glass really is a vessel that holds something very special. I wanted that to be part of my language when I'm making sculptures. In Japanese, we use the word vessel to refer to one's emotional capacity. So if you say somebody is a, a person of a big vessel, then that person is very likely to, like, to be very generous, uh, can tolerate a little more stress than other people, um, whereas if you're a person of a small vessel, that person might be um, easier to collapse or tip over. So that's why I started using vessel forms in my sculptural work. Experimentation is a pretty big part of the process and uh, sometimes it's hard to you know, spend time in the hot shop to try something out new, but I think that's a, a really important part in stepping into a zone that that's, uh, that's unknown and possibly making something uh, different and even more elegant, maybe. I always look to nature to find different texture or forms or uh, different lines um, that become part of my language in my creation. When it's in my head, it's very confusing, so I like the process of sketching and letting things out on paper first. It's not going to look like the sketch most of the time. Glass is very challenging, so for the most part, it's everything is in the moment uh, when you're in the hot shop and you're deciding a lot of different things in terms of the aesthetics of the form. So how do you know when the piece is finished? Oh, when the piece is finished, uh, I guess that's the really hard part for me because um, I see all kinds of imperfections in in a form. And so my tendency is to just spend a lot of time trying to fix one thing. 
it's a it's a big relief when knowing that there's all kinds of imperfections in, in nature. We're made up of imperfections. So why can't my creation be, you know, have imperfection? That's that's part of it. So when I realized that I think things got a little bit more easier to complete. I think I want to continue glass blowing as long as I can and as long as my body will let me. Kazuki's Hot Shop is such an inspiring space with lots of energy, but this was the first time I was seeing it in person. And when I walk into a new location to take a photo, I'm always thinking about two things. The first thing is the background. Does it have depth? Is there texture or interesting lines of perspective? And the second thing is, what is the light doing? Where is it coming from? Is it bouncing off things? And what's the quality of it? Is it soft or is it harsh and spicy? Once I know these two pieces of information, I feel pretty good about where to place people. And while I have your attention, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button. I think it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks. So I have the Arca Swiss 8x10 set up here. It's facing the corner of this studio where you get all this texture of the locker, the kiln. It's a nice corner of the space. And what I like is that you get these hot spots of like where the fire and the heat are coming from. So it'd be a good background and texture to have. So I think I'm gonna have Kazuki stand kind of like right where he's at right now. And we'll see if we can get a nice full body portrait. I'm shooting on Ilford FP4 on a 300 mil, so I'll probably have to shoot it wide open because the only light that's in here are these overheads and there's some light coming in from the front area over there where that entrance is back there. So we'll see what we get. Actually, let me get a, can you look at camera for me? Just look at the camera. I ended up moving Kazuki closer to the front gate since the sky was soft and diffused by that point, so it didn't overpower the lights inside the hot shop. I took meter readings off the walls, his shirt, his face, and the highlight on his forehead. And then I set my exposure to a spot where the brights aren't more than two stops over and the darker areas aren't more than two stops under. Okay, five, six, and a third at a half second. Five, six, and a third at a half second. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna... All right, right here to camera, please. Okay, you look sharp there. Okay, you look fantastic. Keep holding that position. All right, so... Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. That's it. So I'm really happy with how this shot came out. Sometimes you get lucky and the light just cooperates in a way that's unexpected and you find a new frame that works in the moment. So I just wanna thank Kazuki again for letting me into his space and sharing his story with me. If you wanna follow him and find out more about his work, I will leave a link in the description below. And if you wanna see more of these stories, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and help me get more people behind this channel. Thanks again, and I will see you on the next episode of Between the Bellows.